So learned ideas, accidental ideas. Can you give us an example of an accidental idea, Benita? Take Velcro. Let's see what led to its invention in 1941. George de Mestral, a Swiss engineer, was out walking with his dog when he observed that the tiny hooks of the cockleburs stuck onto his trousers and his dog's fur. His familiarity and understanding of materials helped him develop a two-sided fastener using the same principles. What an impact that small observation made. Since that time, we use Velcro for clasping and fastening everything. It has changed our everyday lives in many spheres, from clothes to footwear to orthopedic aids. And now we can't imagine a life without it. That's quite a story. Perhaps we all need to walk some more in the mountains or find other ways to spend time amidst nature. I think nature is one of the biggest sources of inspiration for designers. Yes, observation of nature teaches us many principles that can be applied to all domains of design. This approach is what we call biomimicry or imitation of nature. Any other concerns for society that designers look at? Well, Nina, a sense of compassion may also drive design, as seen in the shoe that grows, an idea where inclusion becomes the key concern. Their slogan, in fact, is let's shoo away diseases. Shoo away. That's a nice play of words. Here, the designer's concern was that children in many parts of the world suffer from parasites and diseases transmitted through the soil. Many of these diseases enter the body because the kids do not have shoes and their feet get nicked and scraped in the process of running about. Yet, when the children fall sick, their parents cannot afford health care. The children miss school. They can't help their families with their daily chores. Everyone suffers. So what was the solution? The American designer Kenton Lee created a shoe that can be adjusted to accommodate the growing feet of a child, made of high quality leather and compressed rubber. These shoes are robust enough to take on rough daily use. Each pair can be modified up to five sizes as the child grows. Imagine a single pair of shoes that is tough in its construction can be worn for five years and be handed over to siblings. An object that protects the feet of barefoot children and guards them against illness right through their growing years is certainly a good example of inclusive design. It aims to enable a child to lead a life of health and dignity. There are actually many fascinating examples of design for children, especially in the field of education. How does a designer approach learning for children? Learning can be easy and fun when it's interesting and experiential. Textbooks are one medium through which children learn in schools, but they often contain difficult and abstract concepts. Explaining these visually makes it a lot easier for children to understand ideas and to recognize them and apply them. Can you recall all the steps of the Pythagoras theorem or of how to square the circle that you learned in school? No, <laughs> I used to. Learning by rote is an exercise that can support a child only in the short run, which is to pass a test. For long-term learning, the key is understanding. Oliver Byrne, a British civil engineer, made geometry easy through a set of six books called The Elements of Euclid, brought out in 1847. He used the unconventional method of using colors instead of numbers and unfolded the theorem beautifully from diagram to proof. All his diagrams are designed keeping in mind the knowledge and information that need to be communicated using appropriate colors. Communication is a very important part of reaching design to the community. You not only clarify the idea, but also build the method to communicate it, as Byrne did. This was about mathematics, which is in the realm of ideas. But even with a concrete object, communicating the design thinking behind it can be as important as making the object itself available to the user. Many design practitioners today are concerned about the course of events that follow the introduction of a design, that is, its social impact. They are interested in how the designed object is received and how it fares in the context for which it was made. They have concerns about social inclusion, gender equity, 
environmental protection and related issues of sustainability. Thanks, Vinita. That really gives us a good perspective on what design can contribute to society. Designers are concerned not only about their users, but also the environment. Our next module will introduce you to the area of design for sustainability. You will now need to go to the next tab for this fortnight's assignment. Please complete and upload it anytime within the next two weeks. And don't forget, a little design goes a long way. See you next time.